Hello everyone, some of you may remember me talking about the Nintendo 3DS somewhat recently. I was talking about how I'm really into accessories for portable consoles like the 3DS and DS. Turns out that I'm enjoying the Switch in a similar way. I think the appeal for me is the organizational aspect, as well as having that feeling that I can bring my Switch and all that I need with me whenever I want. At the same time, it's a home console as well, so it's cool to see that home console style accessories are available for it too. So today we'll take a look at some of my favorite accessories. This video isn't meant to cover any particular basis, it's just what I use, how I use them, and what I think of them. Hopefully it'll be like a helpful real world example to give you some ideas of what sort of accessories you may or may not want to get yourself. The logical place to start with this kind of video might perhaps be cases, but I think the very first thing you should look at is expanding the Switch's storage space. Even if you're someone like me who always gets physical games no matter what, I'm confident that shoving a micro SD card in there is going to be a good move. Ironically, a micro SD card is one of the latest things I got for my Switch. So here's my scenario. Like I said, I'm into physical games, but a combination of things like save games, patches, demos, and one digital exclusive game filled up the system's internal storage pretty fast. I was a bit surprised how often I had to, you know, delete some demos here and there that I wasn't playing at the moment. The kind of micro SD card you can use is listed on the Nintendo website, which I'll link to in the description, and you'll see it on the screen here as well. Basically, any popular card will work. I figured 128GB is probably going to work well for me, so that's what I got. This one's made by Samsung. The memory card slot is just underneath the stand. Depending on what type of card it is, the system may update, but that doesn't take long at all. Here's how the Switch handles storage. Normally everything gets saved to the internal memory if there's no SD card inside, obviously. Once you put a card in, the Switch will use it as its default storage space automatically, which is pretty convenient. Save games always get stored on the system's internal storage, just so you know. You don't have a choice in that matter. While everything like game data will now get saved to the new micro SD card, existing game data will still be on the internal storage. The annoying thing is that you can't copy or move game data to the card. So what I had to do was delete and re-download any digital games. And with the physical games, all I did was delete the game data, pop the cartridge in, hit update and do all that for all the games. Deleting game data does not delete your save games, by the way. The nice thing is that you can just queue up all the downloads. And the same thing with uh, the physical games as well. It's just in, do the thing, if it's queued up, it's good to go, just put the other game in and just keep doing it over and over again. I left it in sleep mode and everything was downloaded after I came back to it an hour or two later. If you have a lot of games, this might be a bit of an annoyance, which is why I suggest you expand your storage as soon as you can. You may also want to change the default save location for screenshots and videos to the SD card as well. That doesn't happen automatically. For any existing pictures or videos, thankfully here you can just copy that stuff over, unlike the game data. With that out of the way, let's get to one of the most important accessories you can have, a hard shell case. They're affordable, hold the system and Joy-Con as well as games, and are small enough to fit into a backpack, or in my case, a messenger bag. There's so many options when it comes to hard shell cases. Some have extra space for more Joy-Con, cables or adapters but I like to keep it simple, so I don't really need something with a lot of storage compartments. This one's from Best Buy's house brand, and it works well for me. It doesn't stand out visually, it holds the console securely, and fits, as of right now, my entire Switch game collection. The top pocket thing can probably hold a few more little bits, but admittedly, I'm not a fan of how loose it is. It looks like something could slide out and come in contact with the system. But then again, I don't really use it for anything. I don't have any experience with other cases, but I do know that there are a lot to choose from. And I am aware of a couple of models because I did a bit of research and then I figured, you know what, I'm just going to go over and drive over to Best Buy and just get a case instead of waiting a couple of days for, you know, for one to arrive from Amazon. Depending on what you fancy, Hestia might be Bestia. This case from Hestia has a zipper on the inside so the loose flap phenomenon doesn't occur. But it does use this net, which I don't like, because something might poke at your Switch through it. Maybe that's not a problem, I don't know. But it's one of the most popular cases, so chances are it'll work for you. 
Another case that I was looking at as well, just because of how cool it looks, is this one here from TomTalk. It's an ultra slim case. It omits the overhead storage compartment and can hold fewer games than most, but it's so slim and the design in my opinion just looks really nice. I almost got this one just because I thought it was so cool. If you really just want to carry everything with you, there's a bunch of options too. Nintendo has their own licensed product, which holds uh, the dock, and uh, of course, third-party alternatives have that ability too. Nintendo even has a messenger bag that holds literally everything Switch-related you can think of, but it has a giant Switch logo on it, and I don't really want to advertise to the world that I'm walking around with all my Switch paraphernalia. But all these look like good options if, for example, you gather with friends often and play Switch games together and you need to carry your setup back and forth. Even though I don't have experience with these cases, I at least wanted to mention that they exist just because I know some people will probably find some good use for these. Apparently Switch cases all the way from small to big seem to be an entire genre almost. It's a bit like how iPod cases were back in the 2000s. If you really want to dive into the topic, I think there's enough videos on YouTube going through all the different ones. That being said, um, I think I could make use of a big case as well just to keep everything organized, but at the moment I don't really need it. The small kind of cases are best for me. If my Switch isn't being used, it's either in the dock or in this case. I also think it holds enough games. Honestly, I can't even imagine a situation where I'd need more than 10 games with me. The point is that it holds a good selection of games I might want to play, so it doesn't need to hold everything I own. That said, game cases are still an attractive thing. I really take care of my game cases. In fact, leaving them in a shelf and putting the actual games into a case is something I will do once I run out of space. The 24 game card case from Hori looks like it'll work for me no problem. Once I have a need for one, this is what I'll get. And since it's officially licensed by Nintendo, I'm sure it's not going to be, you know, horrific or anything. Besides, the reviews look fine. Something I think is really good and pretty affordable is one of these stands. Mine is the official one by Hori, but it doesn't need to be. I know there's an Amazon Basics model that is basically the same. And a friend of mine has one from Wish.com, which seems to be comparable in terms of quality and, you know, has all the same features. You can lean it back at a, you know at different angles, and there's also a little cutout at the bottom so you can hook up a charging cable while it's on the stand. I use this thing all the time for some background YouTubeage when I'm recording something on my computer. It's more secure than just propping the switch up on its built-in stand. It also is usable with other electronics, as you can probably imagine, though a full-size tablet does feel like it's stressing the plastic components a bit more than is preferable. But phones are of course no problem unless you have one of those gigantic ones um, that look like you're holding a tray up to your face. Switch stands are cheap, very convenient and compact to fold it up. So it's another one of those things you can easily throw into a bag. So yay. But let's just say you need more power. The Switch's runtime isn't cutting it and you need to recharge. I personally like the idea of these portable power banks. For some reason, I still find them a bit strange as a concept you're charging a battery off of a battery, but they are useful. And the reason I got one is because I can use it with my other electronics too. Plus for a lot of people, they might be a better option. Plus one of these can also cut down on the amount of stuff you lug around because you don't need a separate car charger, you know, or whatever. Nintendo Switch charging is actually its own topic. And I recommend reading through the switchchargers.com website. Although chances are low, Damage can arise due to dodgy USB-C cables and things of that sort. Also, not all USB chargers have the ability to output enough to charge a switch while it's in use. One that works is this one I got from RavPower, if that's how you pronounce the company's name. I'll show you a picture of the model number. Basically, it's a uh, 20,100 mAh capacity battery and it has USB-C and Quick Charge 3.0. It has enough output to charge a Switch in handheld mode while playing games, and it can charge a totally empty console to full about three-ish times, thereabouts. Something other people might not like is the size of it, though. It's not the smallest thing ever, and this definitely does not fit in my Switch case at all. But my only requirement in terms of size was for it to fit into my bag, which it does no problem. 
I also like that I can use it to charge a bunch of devices at the same time, which is handy in case where I need to charge stuff and my outlets are all used up. Not to mention, just for traveling, I wish I had this in the hotel room when I went to Quebec City last year. If your needs are different, whether it's budget, or maybe the size is not what you're after, or whatever, then I would recommend reading some Amazon reviews of power banks. Usually ones with a lot of good ratings will do the job, and you can always research through the reviews just to confirm that it works well with a switch. Or you could just search the switchchargers.com website for reviews that have switch-specific info. That's a good idea if you have some very specific requirements, like say you want to run a docked switch from a power bank. Lastly, it's headphones. The thing is that Bluetooth headphones aren't supported by the switch, which may annoy some people, but that's fine with me. I always use wired headphones anyway. I actually use three pair of headphones. Some of you may know that I'm an audiophile. Let's just use that term here. I use headphones that may not be in everyone's price range. So I'm not really sure if this helps people in terms of uh, recommendations, but here's what I use for proper portable enjoyment. I think it's a good idea to find something that's really small and not only blocks out sound, but doesn't leak out any either. I don't really want to annoy people around me. And perhaps that's a desire that other people should have as well. I've always used Shure in-ear monitors. I've used the E2C, E3C, SE uh, 2010, 2010, no, uh, 210, <laughs> and uh, now the SE215. These are great because they meet all my requirements and sound pretty decent. These sound slightly warm, mainly because of the rolled off treble. The cord is removable if they ever break, which is basically the best thing ever. I've always had cord breakage issues with earlier Shures, but ironically, these with their removable cable have lasted me since I bought them in 2012 and they see some heavy use when I'm doing stuff around the house and working on cars. My I have extra space in the bag portable headphones are these, the Audio-Technica ATH M50. This is the older model without the removable cable. They aren't really small, but they meet my other criteria and they sound better than the Shures. The sound signature is still slightly leaning towards, you know, fun rather than accurate. There's a bit of a, like a, mid, you know, like a bassy thing going on there. I also use them at home, and in fact, I've got them on my head right now. These are my voiceover monitoring headphones. For at-home usage, if I don't use my speakers, I use these, the Bayer Dynamic T90. I got these from someone over at HeadFi many years ago. These are my best headphones, and definitely not for outside usage. They're an open or semi-open design, I can't quite remember. Sound stage is pretty big, and the sound is very detailed. I love how realistic the environmental sounds and Breath of the Wild sound with these, like the wind and how the foliage rustles. It's a very immersive experience. So yeah, these are the headphones I use. I purposefully left this uh, to last, like this category, because I don't think this part is all that helpful to people, but I still wanted to share what I use when it comes to headphones. I'm sure there are a few people out there who like higher end audio equipment. And if you're one of those people, then hi. Let me know what sort of headphones, speakers, amps, or whatever you're using. And also, some of you might be going, hey, what about charging grips? And also, you know, the, uh, what's it called? The Pro Controller. Well, first of all, everybody knows that those things exist, so it's like, why should I even mention it? And secondly, in terms of accessories, I don't think they're essential, or at least not for me, in my case. I don't need to bring more than one controller with me, the battery life on the Joy-Con are so good. What are they, like 20-ish hours? It's like, I'll never drain those things when I'm out and about. Oot in a boot. My Canadian is coming through there. In the end, I think this covers my favorite Nintendo Switch accessories. There's links in the description of everything I talked about. For the most part, they're Amazon affiliate links. So if you like something from there and buy it, then it does support the channel. Also in the description is a link to switchchargers.com. I think that place is a great resource for chargers and the likes. So if you use that site, make sure to purchase stuff from their Amazon links so their hard work gets supported. Remember to like the video if you did. The second channel is going well right now with over a thousand subscribers. Check that out if you want some niche Japanese gaming news and other random gameplay videos. And lastly, patreon.com slash YSN is my Patreon page 
which you can check out if you want to support the channel. Thanks for watching and I'll see you again in the next video.